Hi there. Um, I am mixing up some pigments. These are Pearlex pigments, and these are Color Art Primary Element pigments. Um, some of them are old. I got this on clearance for 50 cents. This is the spring green, and this must be discontinued. Whereas they, you can currently find them in the store for about $7 for the same size. So I think um, this one was on clearance. I'm kind of, I'm sounding kind of muffled because I'm wearing an N95 mask. You don't want to inhale these pigments when you're mixing them. So um, you can see me right now, I'm wearing this N95. So that's why I sound like I'm under a blanket. So I just opened this one up. We get a very small amount in here. This is a little, like a half teaspoon, maybe. I don't know. I think that's probably a quarter of a teaspoon actually. And I'm using just no more than that in this four ounce portion cup that I get these from like Walmart. So this color was Duo Violet Brass. And then my last color in the primary elements is Jasper Red. And I'm going to mix this with a copper penny paint that I have that is a little thin, but I'm going to thicken it up. So look how pretty that is. Just get a, I think you need to use less of this one, this primary elements. Okay, we'll cover that back up. You, these little micro fine mica pigments you don't want in your lungs. So I'm going to be reconstituting these with Minwax One Coat Polyurethane. Hopefully you can see that. It's very thick. I've already opened the jar with the paint can opener, but you can see it's very thick. And I'm gonna use a tablespoon. And I have some little measuring cups here. And I really wanna constitute this, re reconstitute, I guess, in small portions. And then I'll put my pouring medium into the whole color. So this will be one part measurement or one tablespoon of each of my mica powders constituted into this polyurethane, this one coat triple protection, triple thick polyurethane. And three to four parts of my pouring medium so that'll be three to four tablespoons of my pouring medium. Let me get this off of there. This is a little bit of a tedious job and it does take up a portion of my prep work. Pretty much all of my prep work is dealing with mixing my paints. Okay, so I'll have to clean that later. I'm going to put the lid on my polyurethane. I'm going to pound it shut with my hammer. I don't want to accidentally, I'm just pounding that shut. I don't want to accidentally tip that over. What a waste and a mess. So there's my colors. Can still see some lumps, so I want to give this a few minutes of stirring and see how pretty that is. Let me turn my light on here. Does that help? You can see the shimmer in that. Okay. Let's hope everybody's doing well today. See, that's about that's about that full on my cup and so if we go one two about that much will be my pouring medium so let me make a little mark here this is an exact measurement but it's approximately that much is how much I will be putting in my pouring medium I'll let that sit for a second while I stir the others 
Ooh, see, I don't know if you can see that dust it just flew up. You don't want that in your lungs. As a matter of fact, I don't want that in that paint. That one really flew up. That's because it was really fresh. It was brand new. Whereas the first one I did didn't puff up like that, probably because it was older. Wow, that's so pretty. That's like a sparkling sapphire mica. I see the powder here on the sides. I can see little flecks of it on the surface here. And if I wasn't wearing my mask, that would be up in my respiratory tract. Would not want that into my mouth and down into my lungs. Okay, let that sit for a second. Push it out of the way. This, uh, this one that I got for 50 cents, it was at an estate sale. I was lucky enough to run into an estate sale of a woman that um, I wished I would have known her. She must have passed away and her family did this estate sale. They had no idea what they had on their hands when they started selling her art supplies. And when I, I came across a box of these, there must have been about 15 of them for nothing. I was so lucky. And the family was pleased that somebody was going to be able to use it. So they were, they were like, they had my blessing. They're like, yeah, take it. Which I thought was beautiful. There's that copper. Jasper color. And this lady had um, sewing supplies and materials, threads. Oh, that is so pretty, that Jasper. Look at that color. Oh my gosh. Anyway, I was in heaven. And they were thrilled. They just didn't know. That'll be my kids when I die. <laughs> That's a morbid thought, but wow. Holy cow, is that beautiful. Um, that's the primary elements art pigment, Jasper Red. Wow. These are a little pricey, but man, that's a stunning color. Whew. That's sexy. All right. So here's my pouring medium. My pouring medium is made with four parts of the Bare 8300 Deep Base Untinted House Paint. Looks like this. It's high gloss. See that high gloss enamel? Interior, exterior, bare deep plus. plus. When you open it, um, it's like milky translucent pudding. You'll see it in just a second. Okay, so this is four parts of that deep base and what part of this Josonia's uh, high gloss varnish. So I'm going to mix it up. And watch me pour it into here. You're gonna, what's this one? This, which one did I mark? One of these I put a, where'd it go? Oh, here it is, it is in this one. See that spot there? That's what I'm gonna fill it up to. So most of this is that deep base. Can you see how it's really, it's untinted house paint. There's a goober on there. Okay, I still have my mask on. But this helps to extend and increase the volume on the pigment. You can still see that gorgeous shine coming through. To be honest, this little flimsy plastic spoon is a, not really the greatest for mixing, but it's what's, it's what's dirty right now and in the container. Oh, this is just a beautiful iridescent green. This was that 50 cent container of pigment. Wow, that's pretty. Okay, I'm gonna let that sit and I'll stir it some more. So let me set this aside. We'll do the next one. This is the duo blue green. Want it to be the same volume as the screen. Oh, look at 
that. I can see the color shift of the green under this blue. Can you see? I don't know if the light can do it justice. But when I get this all mixed in and I use it on my paintings, when it dries, the light is going to pick up some of this green that's hidden in this blue. Wow, that's pretty. Okay, now I'm going to mix up these others too, and I don't need to show you that. But that's how I mix my paints when there's pigments. So it's just about a uh, quarter of a, of a teaspoon of that triple thick polyurethane gloss. And then, I'm sorry, an eighth of a teaspoon, quarter to an eighth of a teaspoon of the powder, and then a tablespoon of that um, polyurethane triple thick gloss varnish. And then I mix that up and then I add that one part of that, or one segment of that and four more segments that are equal to that of my mixture of this pouring medium, which is four parts bare, one part Josonia, a high gloss mixed together and four parts of this to one part of this. So I'll post a future video of me actually painting with this very shortly or tonight by the end of the day. Thanks.